data encryption is excellent when it is done right. Unfortunately, Windows hoists data encryption upon unsuspecting people in the wrongest way possible. Let's go ahead and have a look. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to look at what is going on with Windows because they are making yet another change. They're doing it fairly silently, and this could very well lead to a lot of people losing data because Windows just doesn't do things in logical ways. It is insane why people are still on this. And yes, I understand people are still on it because sometimes it's what they're familiar with. They have misconceptions about Linux. They might have to have a specific application or a specific operating system for their work. We understand that. Absolutely. But we also want to encourage people to examine other systems and look at other ways of doing things. If Even if you're not going to switch, be honestly aware of the different options that are out there. Today's video is very interesting because what we're going to see here is that Windows is doing something that it shouldn't do, which is going to lead to a lot of people losing data. So let's go ahead and have a look at the article from Galaxus. So this is uh, just a good summary article that had a lot of the pros and cons in it. This is like kind of good journalism in that respect. So what's going to happen here is the next version of Windows 24H2, what is they're going to do is in the home version, they're going to start De um, encrypting your drive by default. Now, they uh, this is done through BitLocker, and BitLocker has been in Windows for a long time. And you've always had the option, even going back into Windows 7, you know, you had the option, actually, I think it was introduced in Vista, is what they say down here. They had the option to go in, but it was never enabled by default. You have to go in and turn it on. Now, I actually think my Windows 7 computer actually has this on, and I don't know what the encryption keys are. Now, if I had anything on that system that was, I needed anymore, that might be a problem, but I don't. Uh, I have completely switched to Linux. I don't need that computer anymore. But what happened is they added BitLocker, and then they've slowly started rolling it out to more systems. And so what ended up happening now is uh, home users are now going to be impacted. Now, in Windows 11 prior business and enterprise, this would be enabled by default because data encryption can be good. Especially you have a laptop in the field for a business. It has proprietary information, maybe has client newsletter or like uh, client data contacts, things like that. If you lose that computer in the field or if it's stolen when you're in the field and the uh, the data is not encrypted anybody with access to that computer now has any information that's on it so enter a full disk encryption you would need to have some way to get the data off of that drive so it is good in that respect but many of your home users don't have that many things that really need to be encrypted there certainly are some things so it does make sense on some level to have some degree of encryption but just the whole way windows does encryption itself just isn't right. And the reason is encryption requires intentionality and Windows is doing it automatically. So your typical home user who installs 24H2 or has to reinstall their Windows system with 24H2, what's going to happen is their data is going to be encrypted by default. And if they have not taken the active steps they need to do to restore that data, they are going to lose it in the event something goes wrong, which could be something as simple as the TPM chip goes out or in some cases changing out your RAM or your, your graphics card could do something. Uh, the, it's not completely clear always what causes it to say if something's unusual. We need the pass key. If you don't know what that pass key is, you're out of luck. So let's go ahead and first look at the uh, look at the article, and then we're going to have a few other notes about it. So they're encrypting your data with BitLocker by default now on Windows Home as of 24H2. It is automatically activated when reinstalling home versions, and if you do not realize it, you could lose your data. Now you are more secure with it. It is definitely 
a better for security if someone breaks in and steals your computer, what data are they getting? If you're a typical home user, they might get your banking passwords or things like that if you keep your banking passwords on a text file on your computer or something like that. But for the most part, you don't have a lot on your home computer that if somebody breaks in and steals it, it's going to be the most horrible end circumstances of your life. That being said, I encrypt my drives. Mostly, I mean, it's not mostly. I've done this before being in the van, but here in the van, you know, if somebody breaks into the van or steals the van or whatever else, you know, they can't get any of the critical systems. I think the only system I have that's not encrypted is this streaming computer I record on because it just has the stuff related to doing public videos. Uh, nothing else. The only thing on it that's sensitive data is the uh, key pass file for passwords and that in and of itself is encrypted enough. But every other computer I have around here, the laptops, everything else is all encrypted so that if somebody happens to compromise the data, the, the, the physical hardware rather, then they can't get the data that is off of it. Now, the problem is if you're doing encryption without the user knowing about it, and that is what Windows is rolling out, and that is where your fundamental problem is. So it's already there for home systems if you want to use it, but it's not activated, but it now is automatically activated. So what this requires is that you have the recovery pass key. So remember Windows 11 requires that TPM 2.0 chip. Well, that TPM 2.0 chip is a pass key chip and that keeps all the pass keys that you need in order to decrypt the drive. So you don't have any interaction. You boot up the system. You don't even know the computer is encrypted or not. The TPM chip boots, sees everything looks normal and decrypts the drive and you don't have any uh, any interplay with that at all. And so what ends up happening is you don't know that your disk is even encrypted. Now, if in your setup, <clears throat> they gave you a big warning screen that you could not move beyond without some interaction, you know, kind of like what they're trying to do, forcing you to get on the internet to say, your drive is encrypted, you must Take this thing, do not skip this step, write this down, print the screen, do something with it, take a bit, whatever it takes. The problem is they don't do that. They just set it up. Your TPM chip covers it. But then even worse, they take that pass key and they put it inside your Microsoft account because remember they're forcing you on the internet and they're forcing you to create a Microsoft account. So if you do not do that, you could lose that drive. And I'm wondering if we're gonna see them. In fact, what something somebody just told me recently that what I talked about getting around that required internet setup in the Windows 11 setup that I did a few weeks ago, somebody told me that they've already gotten rid of that. So you can't even do that method. So I wonder if this is because they're forcing everybody on the internet, they're forcing everybody on that Microsoft account, so they're forcing everybody to have that passkey inside of your Microsoft account. That seems to be what they're trying to do. And that way, you know, if as long as you know how to get into your Microsoft account, which you may or may not know, your typical home user, um, they, you know, they can't get in and grab that data. So. Ultimately, what your best step is to do is evaluate whether you need encryption or if it makes sense to you. If it makes sense to you, you need to go in today. Go into your settings in Windows and search for BitLocker in the settings, and they're going to tell you if, Bit, if BitLocker is turned on. If it is turned on, you can either A, disable it so that you don't have that encryption any longer, or B, if you think that you do need encryption, hit the option to see the pass key and make a copy of that and don't store that on the computer. You have to store that somewhere else. This is where you have your little black book with your passwords in, you know? And so you go ahead and you get that guy there. You write down the pass key. Maybe if you have a printer, you print it out and then you take that and you put it in a safe somewhere because if you have a situation where that chip goes bad or the computer says something seems odd about this setup. You have to have that or you are going to lose your data. Now, of course, if you have your Microsoft account, they want to do that, but that raises a few other issues. Now, the other factor, let's go ahead and mention it since it does mention at the bottom is that the, um, in some, uh, in some tests, depending on your system performance an SSD can be decreased 45% when you're using full disk encryption. This is a problem of using encryption as it does require some extra data.
So what are my general thoughts about some of this kind of stuff? First, not all home users need this, so it doesn't make any sense. And the way they implement it, people don't even oftentimes know it is being uh, encrypted at all. So check those settings. Now, what my concern is with storing them on a Microsoft account, Microsoft is not a zero knowledge, which means Microsoft can see the things that are in there. Now, chances are there's not going to be some employee that's going to be like, okay, Bob Smith's, um, here's Bob Smith's encryption keys. Ha ha ha. But suppose you take a run every morning. And every morning you run down the street and you run by a bank. Well, one day the bank is robbed and the police say, hey, I want a geofence warrant around this bank. And they say, well, this guy runs by the bank every morning at 9 a.m. He must be casing the place. So they issue a geofence warrant. And then they go ahead and they grab your information. And they say, ah, Microsoft, we would like to see what's in here. And they go in and do a raid because they have no other leads other than this guy that runs by the bank. And they take your computer. But your drive is encrypted. Well, with the Microsoft account in the warrant, they have your pass key now. So this is that workaround that they have been trying to get to have the workaround in encrypted systems, like encrypted and and uh, encrypted messaging systems. This is that backdoor they wanted. Your data is encrypted, but the encryption key is stored on your Microsoft account, which the government can get access to with a warrant. Interesting. Uh, what about other security? Microsoft has been known for its security blunders as of late. Uh, and then, of course, you always have the issue of the rogue employee. If you are a targeted uh, person, somebody's targeting you, they might find somebody who has access to this information and say, "Hey, I'm going to slip you. A, I'm going to slip you a couple hundred dollar bills here. I'd like to grab some data off of this particular account." You know, this happens a lot more than we think. And so there are serious concerns with having encryption set up, the key sent to Microsoft, and then you not even knowing you need to get a pass key. So today, if you're using Windows, go into your settings today, like right now, today, search for BitLocker and see if it is enabled. If it is enabled, you should either A, disable it, or B, Make sure that you have those keys. And I don't know if it's possible to remove those keys from the Microsoft server, but if you can remove those keys from the Microsoft server, you should probably think about doing that. That is um, definitely what you should do. Now, I want to spend a couple more minutes here, and uh, I just want to talk very briefly about Linux encryption, because Linux encryption is, uh, is something that you can do. As I said, I run entirely Linux, and... Everything I have is encrypted, at least everything that is uh, critical. In fact, one thing's not. My Raspberry Pi is not, and I'm going to look into that because I know you can do uh, home directory encryption. So I want to look into that a little bit because we do have client data on there, and I want to make sure that some of that is safe as well. Although most of the sensitive client data I actually keep inside my KeePass database. But there is a nice uh, linuxsecurity.com article here. Uh, this is from about about a year and a half ago. And uh, this one talks about the authoritative guide to Linux disk encryption. And this is a, a good read. I'm going to put both of these articles in the description of this video. So Linux can do encryption a couple ways. You have your full disk encryption. So this is generally the best way to do it, although it causes the greatest concern for data loss. So be aware of that. Uh, in something goes wrong, it's going to be really hard to get any data back. But I still have not had an issue with this. I did actually have that case where we had a, uh, a Linux Mint system go down because the boot sector filled up and I was a moron and restarted the system when I shouldn't have rather than fixing it before I shut the system down, right? Uh, lessons learned. But that was a fully encrypted drive and we were able to get it fixed, restored, and booting without losing any data. So it's still possible. Now, you also have uh, partition encryption, so you can use Lux and do uh, partition encryption. This is usually the best option for uh, basic home users because you don't need to store everything, but you can create a separate partition, encrypt that, and then you can just boot into that when you need it. Just hit the mount button, enter your password, and anything you drop inside of there is going to be encrypted. So if you have just a couple of files that you need encrypted, 
that's a good way to do it. You also have your home partition encryption, and you do have to consider if you want to or need to encrypt your swap partition as well. Um, now, depending on the way you are doing your encryption, a full disk encryption, you do not need to worry about that. Home partition encryption, I can't find as much information, although there are some good articles on the ArchWiki about encrypting the swap partition as well. And so those are some of the ways that you can do it. Um, none of this, obviously, today we're not going to teach you how to do encryption. Just to know you can do full disk encryption on Linux. You can do partial disk encryption on Linux. You can do file disk encryption on Linux. Linux supports. Lux is the one I usually use, which is just kind of a, um, a built-in system. Uh, we talk about that down here. Um, that's the, where's it at? Linux unified key setup. This is basically a way that the keys are stored in, inside the system, allowing you to, to access your, uh, your encrypted partitions. They also support, Linux also supports Veracrypt and supports, um, uh, there's, there's a number of different forms of encryption that it supports. So there are a lot of options you can do depending on what you are, are wanting to accomplish. So with that, um, definitely encryption is worth doing, but it needs to be done intentionally, not something that you're doing because, well, you just kind of is foisted upon you because Microsoft thinks that everybody's data should be encrypted because in every instance, that's probably not the case. Grandma's data probably doesn't need to be encrypted. Um, uh, business uh, tax uh, tax accountant's data needs to be encrypted. There are definitely some differences there. And uh, I do have serious concerns with Microsoft encrypting your drive by default and then not telling you about it and then storing the pass keys for that encryption onto their accounts. I have concerns about that as well. So those are kind of my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, I will probably do some more stuff maybe with encryption in the future. Of course, we did talk a little bit about it with the um, our secure encrypted banking operating system we've done, which I will be updating that video because it's about time I, I build a new one of those. And uh, we also uh, have talked a little bit about doing um, uh, 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 encrypted drives with tails and things like that. So there are options out there for Linux encrypting your data, and it is, in, uh, it is intentional. We'll also mention you can use a TPM chip or a uh, YubiKey with disk encryption as well on Linux. Uh, of course, there are guides about that. Ubuntu is going to be the very first uh, distro, I think, that completely supports that out of the box. Uh, there might be other ones as well, but uh, that they just did some press releases that that is coming, if not already here. So there are definitely options as long as you're intentional. I'm okay with that, but I think the way Windows is doing it, I'm not okay with that. So let me know your thoughts about these in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done that. And give, leave us a like or, hey, maybe a dislike if you think that this is completely wrong and stupid. And, you know, usually that means you're a Windows shell, but that's okay. We like the Windows shell too. <laughs> Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.